spoken numerous times on the subject of atheism. Please welcome our debate participants, Mr. Ray Comfort and Mr. Ron Barrier. This is Ellen Johnson, the president of American Atheists. It's Good Friday back in 2001, and she's about to introduce me to 250 atheists at their national convention in Florida. So how did I get invited to speak to 250 atheists at their national convention? Well, this is Ron Barrier. He was the national spokesman for American Atheists. He's the one who challenged me to a debate. But after I sent him a book that I'd written called God Doesn't Believe in Atheists, for some reason he pulled out of the debate. We'll pick it up from a news story. From the office of Ron Barrier, quote, Yes, I did withdraw the invitation after I read his idiot book, God Doesn't Believe in Atheists. End of quote. After receiving a great deal of criticism from fellow atheists for withdrawing, Barrier decided to go ahead with the debate and even sweeten the pot by offering to pay my round-trip airfare from Los Angeles to Orlando. I've been crossing swords with atheists since the early 1980s in a speaker's corner back in my home country of New Zealand. This particular day was special because it was the day I was leaving with my family to live in the United States. It was my last day after 12 years of almost daily preaching the gospel. It was there that I regularly used a Coke can and a banana to parody atheism. The man in front of me yelling was Steve, an angry atheist who day after day for years tried to stop the crowd from hearing what I was saying. He was very unreasonable and would do everything he could to mock me and make me look foolish. This is another speaker called The Wizard, who also opposed the gospel, but despite that, we were good friends. Well done for all those years. During the 12 years in Speaker's Corner, I collated apologetical arguments in the front of my Bible. When I suggested publishing these in a special Bible to one of my publishers, they loved the idea. And so my pregnant Bible gave birth to the Evidence Bible. Keep that in mind because it's relevant to the Banana Man story. On this day in Florida, even though nobody's opposing me, I'm a little nervous. It's because I'm about to do that same Coke can and banana parody that makes fun of atheism, and I'm not sure if I can get my listeners to crack a smile. This is because atheists don't think of their beliefs as being ridiculous and therefore worthy of ridicule. Up until that time, I'd been doing the banana routine for about 20 years. Millions of years ago, there was this massive explosion in space. Nobody knows what caused the explosion. It just happened. And over those 20 years, I'd always got a laugh from Christians as soon as I produced the banana. Behold, the atheist's nightmare. <laughs> but this was going to be different. Here's the beginning and the ending of the parody at the atheist convention. Behold, the atheist's nightmare. Now, if you study a well-made banana, of which this is, you'll find on the far side, there are three ridges. On the close side, two ridges. If you get your hand ready to grip a banana, you'll find on the far side, three grooves. On the close side, two grooves. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. There's outward indicators of inward contents. Green, too early. Yellow, just right. Black, too late. Now, if you go to the top... There was a little laughter, but it may have been cynical, which is understandable. Here is a Christian audience in England in the same year. can may have come from. Billions of years ago, there was a big bang in space. Nobody knows what caused the big bang, it just happened. And from the big bang issued this huge rock. And on top of the rock was found a sweet, bubbly substance. And over millions of years, aluminum crept up the side and formed itself into a can, a lid, and then a tap. And then millions of years later, red paint, white paint, just a little bit of green paint fell from the sky and formed itself in the words Coca-Cola. Twelve fluid ounces. <laughs> Do not litter. Say, man, what are you doing? You're insulting my intellect. And so I am. You know if the Coca-Cola can is made, there must be a maker. If it's designed, there must be a designer. Behold, the atheist's nightmare. <laughs> Now, if you study a well-made banana, you'll find on the far side there are three ridges, on the close side, two ridges. 
If you get your hand ready to grip a banana, you'll find on the far side three grooves, close side two grooves. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. <laughs> you'll find the maker of the banana, Almighty God, has made it with a non-slip surface. <laughs> There's outward indicators of inward contents, green too early, yellow just right, black too late. Now, if you go to the top of the banana, you'll find the maker, as with the Coca-Cola can makers, has placed a tab at the top for ease of entry. <laughs> when you pull the tab, the contents don't squirt in your face. <laughs> you'll find the wrapper, which is biodegradable, has perforations, like your pad paper. It usually has four perforations. Notice how gracefully it sits over the human hand. <laughs> Notice the point at top for ease of entry, just the right shape for the human mouth, Chewy, palatable, good for you. And the maker has even curved it toward the face to make the whole process <laughs> so much easier. That's if you get it the right way around. <laughs> of course, if you give one of these to a chimpanzee, it hasn't got the sense to use the tab. They all go like that, open this end, entirely disproving Darwin's theory tale of evolution. <laughs> In 2001, the actor Kirk Cameron heard one of my sermons, a teaching called Hell's Best Kept Secret, which resulted in us combining ministries. It was now 2003, and Kirk and I were about to film an episode on the subject of atheism for season one of our television program. When I told him I'd like to do the banana routine, he was concerned that atheists would mock me for it. My thought was that it was for Christian television and atheists wouldn't even get to see it. Yeah, I did. I used to be a devout atheist. And that sounds a little strange, but I was committed to my belief that God didn't exist. Despite his concern, he was very gracious and we filmed it anyway. Hold this, Kirk. Behold the atheist's nightmare. Now, if you go to the top of the banana, you'll find, as with the soda can makers, they placed a tab at the top. So God has placed a tab at the top. When you pull the tab, the contents don't squirt in your face. You'll find it was a bit flat without a live audience, but it was no big deal. We put it into our program and never gave it a second thought. Three years had passed. Our television program was now in its third season, was award-winning, and it was airing in 170 countries. Prayer is the line of communication. It was popular because it was unique for Christian television. Hey, I thought you told me this was a private beach. They're building a high rise. It doesn't sound like construction to me. Death can come when you're least expecting it. You can get up, Ray. It's just a flesh wound. Things were humming until I was told that the banana parody was all over the internet. I couldn't understand why it would be, but I soon found out. Someone had captured it from our television program, removed the Coke can portion so that the parody didn't make sense. Then he said that the original banana wasn't that shape and that it had been genetically altered to fit the human hand. It even produced a motion graphic in an effort to convince people that it had nothing to do with God making it for mankind. The clip without the Coke can made me look really dumb, but it was just another bump in the road, or so I thought. The issue exploded when the world's most famous atheist Professor Richard Dawkins mockingly did the banana routine during a television interview. Beautifully designed, like it's um, it's um, uh, fits ne neatly into the hand. Right. Um, and um, it's got a tab at the top for ease of opening. Um, 
so it doesn't squirt in your face. Mm -hmm. And then he, and then he um, says, um, uh, and it's exactly the right shape. It's curved towards the face for ease of eating. <laughs> um, and it's color coded um, green too early, black too late, yellow just. <laughs> and while addressing university students. Ray Comfort is a New Zealander living in, uh, living in the United States somewhere. Um, you may know him as the banana man. <laughs> if you study a well-mind banana, you'll find that it, it perfectly fits the human hand uh, as a tab at top for ease of opening. Kirk's wise words of warning came back to haunt me. Unfair of me because Ray Comfort is probably the very bottom of the creation's barrel. He's the worst of the bunch. You study a well-made banana, you'll notice. <laughs> so when I say Ray Comfort is really, really stupid, I'm saying something. The original Banana Man clip quickly topped over a million views and it had dozens of spin-offs. There were Banana Man videos, Banana Man songs, and many Banana Man memes. They took delight in re-editing my interviews to make me say things I didn't say. My Facebook page became inundated by thousands of atheists and became almost impossible to moderate. Behold, the Christian's nightmare. Now, if you study a well-made banana, you'll find it's a consequence of evolution. The day after I interviewed outspoken atheist Professor P.Z. Myers, I was surprised to see that he posted the headline, I met Ray Comfort tonight. He also posted photos of us taken during the interview of atheists using bananas to sword fight in the foreground. Almost overnight, I'd become the international celebrity idiot poster boy for atheism. Yet something strange began to happen. Atheists didn't feel threatened by Banana Man. When high profile atheists invited me onto their programs, they seemed surprised that I was able to string a whole sentence together and they'd let me share the gospel. The clown could actually juggle words, and if he breathed a little fire at the same time, who cares? It was kind of entertaining. And so began a strange and wonderful journey. When I was interviewed on the atheist experience, they started a tradition by keeping a banana in view for the entire interview. Then they let me share the gospel, and despite that, it became their most popular video, with over half a million views. Anything about Banana Man received more than normal attention, some getting hundreds of thousands of YouTube views, some over a million. When atheists reviewed our movies, they would get a massive audience. Atheists found they could get video views by using my name in a derogatory way. They took one of their interviews of a woman in Hollywood in which there was a clear gospel presentation and renamed it, Ray Comfort Gets Destroyed. Our version had about 30,000 views, but theirs quickly received 10 times that amount. <laughs> Michelle, what do you think happens when someone dies? Uh, you know, I think you, we call it recycled souls. You're gonna get recycled? Yeah, your soul get recycled. How about that? Who's in charge of that, God? Uh, I think, you know, mother and father of the universe. Mother and father of the universe? Yes. Okay. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me as I continue my examination of the books of Ray Comfort. A well-known atheist began reading my books out loud to other atheists, word for word, including the gospel messages. Then he'd provide his own opposing commentary. With chapter two of that book, which is titled, Our Conscience Testifies to a Creator and Our Need for a Savior. A national syndicated secular television program from New Zealand heard about Banana Man and sent a camera crew to Southern California, and they too allowed me to share the gospel. It was as though Banana Man was the star of a twisted superhero series. The analogy seemed to fit. I'm a very ordinary believer who was given a special cloak of humiliation that supernaturally opened doors into the elite atheist community. The only kryptonite that rendered Banana Man powerless was pride, and as long as I had to wear the cloak, I had very little of that left. I couldn't help but think of Paul's words in Philippians 1.12. 
But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. It seems strange to me that any atheist would want to debate dumb old banana man, but they did. And one was a high profile atheist named Thunderfoot, whose YouTube channel had more than 170 million views. He especially came to our ministry for a debate on the existence of God, and then he stayed for lunch. But as soon as the debate was put online, atheists mocked him for what they perceived as weakness on his part. They even made a cruel video of him stuttering during the debate. For many years, myself and a friend named Stuart Scott preached the gospel each Saturday at Southern California's famed Huntington Beach. We'd begin with an intelligence test to show that we could often get things wrong. And when it comes to where we spend eternity, we need to get that one right. Here's Scotty going through the test. How many of each animal did Moses take into the ark? Two. Two. What is the name of the race print deaf people use? Braille. It's spell the word shock out loud, both of you. S -S spell it. S H O P. S H O P. What do you do when you come to a green light? Stop. Is it pot? <laughs> Silk. S I L K. Okay. What do cows drink? Milk. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> five for five. One more. Spell the word silk. S I L K. What do cows drink? Hot water. Yes, <laughs> During those years, an atheist named Jorgen would often stand in the crowd and listen. Well, seven years ago at this very spot, I got to speak with an atheist named Jorgen. One day, he let me interview him. And this interview has become very special because of what happened. Jorgen, are you a spiritual person? No, I'm not. Are you an atheist? Yes, I am. Now, why are you an atheist? Because I don't believe in God. So you believe nothing created everything? I believe in the uh, evolution theory. So what created everything in the beginning? Well, I wasn't there, so I don't have the details. <laughs> so you don't know what created everything? No. But obviously it wasn't nothing, because nothing can't create anything. So something created everything in the beginning? Maybe. So you're not an atheist? You believe something created everything? Yeah, but I don't lose any sleep of thinking about who and what might have done that. Well, you should. Why? Because you've offended him by sinning against his law. No, no. Jorgen, how many, are you a good person, Jorgen? I heard it a lot of times, Sandra. I've done the things you ask other people. So you've lied and stolen? So has everybody else under the sun. Yeah, but you're not going to answer for everyone in judgment day. You're going to have to answer for yourself, Jorgen. Are you going to be guilty or innocent on Judgment Day? Have you, have you looked at a woman and lusted for her? When is Judgment Day? Oh, it's coming. When? Sure as hell it's coming. God knows when it's coming. You mean you're referring to when you die? Because as far as I'm concerned, when I'm physically dead, I'm dead and that's the end of it. So. What if, you're, what if you're wrong? Then so be it. If atheism was a religion, Charles Darwin would be their prophet and his book, Origin of Species, would be their holy book. When I found that the book was in public domain, I had an idea. I'd write a forward exposing evolution as being unscientific and, of course, present the gospel. And then give away free copies at universities. Kirk loved the idea, and so he made a short video to tell our donors what we wanted to do. This is a beautiful 304-page, full-color cover edition of Darwin's famous Origin of Species book that will be given away free on the 150th anniversary of the book. Little did we know that we had kicked a big and angry hornet's nest. I had blasphemed atheism's sacred writings and insulted their prophet by merely writing a foreword. Because of the outrage and Kirk's involvement, the media latched onto the story. I do have a copy of the book, and here it is. It looks just like, you know, a normal copy of Charles Darwin's book, and it has this special introduction that kind of looks like it. Then I read of what atheists planned to do. Quote, there is already a thousand member Facebook group focused on interfering with Comfort's distribution of the origin of species. End of quote. As I read of their plans, I could imagine groups of fanatical atheists following their teams around and abusing them, telling students not to take the book. 
So we decided to change our plans. We were going a day early. It turned out to be a strategically good move. When Kirk and I showed up with the team at UCLA, along with 2,000 books, atheists came up to us wide-eyed, saying, you're not supposed to be here today. You're a day early. They told us they didn't even have their printing done and how they hadn't finalized their plans to counter-protest. Richard Dawkins wasn't too happy either after 170,000 copies were given out in 100 universities in one day, mostly unhindered. There is no refutation of uh, Darwinian evolution in existence. If a refutation ever were to come about, it would come from a serious scientist, not an idiot. The total would eventually be 200,000. The president of Focus on the Family, Jim Daly, wrote an article back in 2009 called A Conversation with an Atheist. He spoke of a short video that atheist Penn Jillette had produced and put on YouTube, but has since been removed. The well-known atheist from Penn and Telefame spoke of being given a Bible by a tall businessman. He said that the man said, I'm a businessman, I'm sane, not crazy. And he looked me right in the eye as he spoke. It was really wonderful. I believe he knew that I was an atheist, but he was not defensive and he looked me right in the eyes and he was truly complimentary, not in any way empty flattery. He was really kind and nice and sane and looked me in the eyes and talked to me. And then he gave me this Bible. And I've always said that I don't respect people who don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and hell, and people could be going to hell and not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think it's not worth telling them this because it would make it socially awkward, and then he said this amazing statement. How much do you have to hate somebody to believe everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? If I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it, that truck was bearing down on you, there's a certain point where I tackle you. And this is more important than that. I could hardly believe that an atheist would have such insight. I was so encouraged by what he said, I personally wanted to thank him for making it. At the same time, I couldn't help but wonder who this man was who gave him a Bible and left such a good impression. I wanted to be like this man. My friend Thunderfoot came back to the ministry for a second debate, and this time he was far more relaxed and more confident. If you want to call it conscience, yes. You know, you know the word conscience means? Uh, it's a combination of the word con and science, which means with knowledge. So we all have an inbuilt knowledge of right and wrong. So was mass murder wrong in Germany? Well, I mean, this is where it comes down to this very tough decision of what is beneficial for society and what is beneficial for the individual. So let me see if I can pin you down. So are you saying murder is right or wrong? Can you say it's absolutely wrong to murder someone, or you say it could be good for the good of society? I would go for exactly the answer that you gave, which is it's contingent. It's contingent on the circumstances. No, murder is always wrong. Uh, you just said you would kill someone. Self-defense. Defending my family. But earlier you said that killing someone is killing someone. It's that's No, no, there's a difference between murder and self-defense, defending your family. That's my own conviction. So you're not going to say murder is right or wrong. You won't say murder is wrong. Um, you know why you won't say it? Because if you say there's absolute morality, then you're in trouble, because I'm going to say, where do you get that from? There are, there are things that will result, there are things that um, prohibit you in terms of behavior from having a, a stable population. So is, is rape wrong? Would you put your finger on that and say, yeah, that's wrong? I mean, would you just say, oh, it could be okay for the good of society? Is murder wrong? Is rape wrong? I, I can tell you that the reason you're breathing is because you are a machine. Stealing wrong. Stealing is an interesting one. Now you're getting into the interesting stuff because I, I guess it's a sort of functional communism, but... How can we go off on a rabbit trail of Indians when I ask if lying is wrong? Come on, is lying wrong? No, no what we're doing... Stealing is wrong. Uh, lying is a requirement of language, right? If you lie to people... Oh, right? stop no, no, it. They are, you know why you won't say it? Because if you say there's absolute morality, then you're in trouble, because I'm going to say, where do you get that from? Thunderfoot once again stayed for lunch. 
In August of 2011, a well-known magician named Dean Dill came to our ministry and entertained our staff with a little magic. Well, anyway, my name is Dean, and I'm a magician in Magic Castle for 40 years. And 40 years? 40 years. That's one, two, three. <laughs> oh. You see that one? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any other questions, Mike? Yeah, no, no, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. A short time later, someone sent Dean another Penn Jillette video in which he expressed frustration that intelligent people believe silly stories such as Noah and the Ark. The person who sent the clip knew that Dean was friends with both Penn and myself, and he asked if Dean could get us together so that I could explain the Rosetta Stone to Penn. I replied, Dean, I would crawl over broken glass for 10 miles to interview Penn on camera about the existence of God, it would be a heart's deepest desire for me to do this. When his attempt to get us together didn't come to fruition, I concluded that God didn't want me to speak with Penn Gillette. And so I forgot about it. It was now September of 2011. We had released a unique pro-life documentary in that it showed eight people who were pro-abortion changing their minds in seconds and becoming pro-life because they were asked one question. You just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, that's, I've just changed my mind about abortion. So you're going to vote differently in future? Yeah. You mean that? Yeah. Within weeks, it had millions of views. And it wasn't long until mothers were showing up at the ministry with a baby or sending us pictures of babies that were alive because they'd seen 180 and changed their mind about killing their child. Richard Dawkins once tweeted, any fetus is less human than an adult pig. So when someone asked if I'd like him to hand deliver something to Dawkins, I grabbed a 180 DVD and wrote a quick note of greeting on the front. I deliberately cut back the word thought to thought as I often did when texting and sending out tweets. Then I forgot about it. That is until I heard that the learned professor thought that my thought was a thoughtless spelling error. He was so delighted with what he thought was more evidence of my ignorance that he sent out a special tweet. He said, quote, the same Ray Comfort as the original Banana Man. He also gave me a DVD with a request for my thoughts." End quote. The professor even went to the trouble of producing a video about it. I was rather astonished to read the message on it. It was a very charming dedication to me, and I'll show it. He would like to hear my thoughts, T-H-O-R-T-S. I couldn't have bought such publicity. His promotion immediately pushed 180 further into the atheist community. As with the Darwin books, we gave away free DVDs. 200,000 were handed out in 100 universities in the United States in one day. I was speaking at a creation museum in Southern California at which there was a crowd of 50 or so atheists who were protesting outside in the heat. They were all very familiar with Banana Man, so I invited them to join me in air conditioning in a debate about the existence of God. Then afterwards, I'd buy them pizza. They were polite, had some interesting questions, and kindly allowed me to speak. It was another amazing door of opportunity that atheists would let me share biblical truths, go to the trouble of filming it themselves, and then put it online for thousands of other atheists to see. All because of Banana Man. You asked us if we had faith. I wanted to ask you which definition of faith from the dictionary you're referring to. Number two, I have faith of that, that based on previous experience, but I don't have faith based on no previous evidence. I don't think that's humanly possible. Okay, Bruce, do you have faith in your wife? <laughs> oh, don't bring a that's the faith number two. Okay, that's a, that's he, have, he has confidence in his wife, okay? I have confidence that my wife will treat me fairly and based upon past experience. Because if you didn't have faith in your wife, you'd be sleeping on the couch tonight, wouldn't you? If my wife was here, probably so. <laughs> so, folks, what Bruce said is very important. I don't have faith that God exists. I know He exists because of creation or nature. I have confidence in the character of God and His integrity to keep His word. That's where my confidence is. So it's not a faith that God exists. It's faith number two, absolutely. That's what I'm talking about with you guys. If you'll turn from your sins and have that confidence in God, He'll reveal Himself to you. Yes. 
In 2013, I made a number of calls to evolutionary professors and left messages saying that I was a filmmaker and wanted to ask them for evidence of evolution. Four got back to me, but none could give me any evidence for Darwinian evolution. All they could offer was speciation and adaptation. Speciation is evident in the different dogs we see, from the Chihuahua to the Great Dane. That's just a variety within the dog kind. It's not Darwinian evolution, which looks for a change of kind. Neither is adaptation, which we see in the beaks of birds adapting to their surroundings. That's not Darwinian evolution. The birds are still birds and the dogs are still dogs. The professors pointed to changes in bacteria, but again, the bacteria remained bacteria. If you look closely, you can see our origin of species in his library. What for many years has been called the missing link is still missing. A few months later, we released Evolution vs. God on YouTube and it immediately received hundreds of thousands of views, then millions. Atheists were furious. Banana Man was getting a little hard to swallow. One reviewer said that when Richard Dawkins saw it, he'd have a cow, and he certainly did. It was so painful, he tweeted about it five times, giving it huge publicity in the atheist world. He tweeted, goodness, Jacqueline Glenn talks fast. But she talks sense. Banana Man won't know what's hit him, and he won't like it." End of quote. Jacqueline Glenn believed that there was scientific evidence for evolution on our cutting room floor. Ray, along with the American atheists, I ask that you release these unedited interviews. She didn't have any evidence herself, but she thought that these scientists definitely did. All she needed to do was ask the scientists what we'd supposedly removed, but she didn't because we hadn't removed any so-called evidence. Neither did we make P.Z. Myers look like an idiot, as she said. We just let him share what he believed. You think you're a primate? Yes, I am. Are you a talking primate? I am. Are you a cousin of bananas? Why, yes. Hawks have an eye for any movement. They can easily spot a tiny rodent from a great distance and swoop in for a meal. In 2013, I made one small move and in came the hungry hawks for a juicy feast. It happened because I'd responded to an atheist named Leone when she called me a bibliophile. I'd never heard of the word bibliophile and thought that she'd made it up as an insult to Christians. It looked like a cross between the word Bible and pedophile. Atheists regularly use made up words like retard, a person who followed me and was therefore retarded. After I told her to make sure that she didn't call any other Christians on my page a bibliophile, she apologized, and then she said that the word meant lover of books. I replied, quote, Leone, I'm the one that should be apologizing. I thought it was just another atheist insult, a cross between pedophile and Bible. My sincere apologies. Still learning, best wishes, end of quote. Then I forgot about it. That is until Richard Dawkins tweeted to his over one million followers. Quote, priceless gem. Ray Comfort insulted to be called bibliophile. Thought it meant pedophile. Oh joy, end of quote. Then the well-known atheist actor and comedian Ricky Gervais retweeted Richard Dawkins' tweet to his millions of followers and added, ha ha. Suddenly my literary ignorance became breaking news for atheists. I had given the hawks a tasty feast. It seemed that everyone in the entire atheist community suddenly knew the definition of bibliophile and used the word daily. If Banana Man was beginning to be laid to rest, he certainly was resurrected that day with a shout. Any possibility of gleaning some intellectual dignity was blown away in the winds of mockery. As Banana Man, I had established myself as a reliable court jester. That's always good for a laugh. My consolation, though, was that this wasn't the first time a Christian had been used for entertainment. The horrors of what they suffered for the faith brought my little problem into perspective. Ray Comfort recently got quite upset when somebody used the word bibliophile on his page. He mistaken... After that incident, I felt really humiliated by the Banana Man label. Strangers would point at me in public, yell, Hey, it's Banana Man! Banana Man and walk away laughing. <laughs> yes, I went to a Halloween party and I was the flying spaghetti monster and somebody was dressed up as you. You mean Banana Man? Yes, Ray Comfort, right? Yes, the, it was an atheist Halloween party. Per 
Chris Becker. One day, when I was talking to Scotty about how embarrassed I felt, he pointed out that the name had opened huge doors in the atheist community. Then he reminded me that in the Bible, God often takes what seems like disasters and failures and uses them for his purposes. He talked about how thousands of atheists had been frequenting my Facebook page every day for years. When I asked the atheists why they kept coming back, they said that I was like a train wreck waiting to happen. They couldn't look away. From that day onwards, I decided to run with it rather than try and hide from it. When I heard that David Silverman, the president of American Atheists, was in Los Angeles, I experimented to see if Banana Man would open doors. When I asked if he'd like to have lunch, I was surprised that he said he would. So early in July, myself and Emil Easy's Wayne, the president for Living Waters, spent 90 minutes over lunch with the president of American Atheists. David told us there was there as a young man back in 2001 in Florida when I did the banana parody. Sometime later, he kindly gave me a commendation for my Banana Man book. Sort of. Quote, Stop. Put this book down and back away slowly. My book is better. Read that instead. David Silverman, President, American Atheist Incorporated. It's always difficult to draw a crowd to listen to the gospel, so we would ask trivia questions and give away money for the answers. It would draw a good-sized crowd with something that people enjoyed and it created goodwill among the listeners. But we had a problem. Each week, an atheist named Ken knew the answers and would continually take our money. What was the name of Charles Darwin's book? I'm oh, the original species! Who said that? I did! I did! Hey, Ken. No matter how many times we asked him to let other people answer and get the money, he wouldn't stop. OK, here's the question. What is the number one killer of privates in the United States? Anyone know? Trees! Who said trees? Ken, you made another dollar. Yeah, sure. Do you want money? Come on, Ken, I'll bring it to you. Come on, Ken! Atheists often ask for a sign. One day, Ken got one. Where is this accent from? New Zealand! Oh, Ken, come and get your money! Ken is an atheist, he's here every week getting money because he knows me. <laughs> the poor guy's... Oh! Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Oh, you might get that on camera! Whoa! You might that! Whoa! That was <laughs> phenomenal! I, I, I'm suddenly suffering from a little bit of amnesia. I'm not quite sure why. That was funny, though. Thanks in part of the publicity given to Banana Man by Richard Dawkins and other high-profile atheists, our movies and our Living Waters University YouTube channel took off. Whoop, whoop. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Ron, what do you think happens when someone dies? Where do they go? Uh, our soul goes on to a better place. Where's that? Heaven. Heaven? Has anyone go to hell? Oh, yeah. We're here. This is hell? This is hell. Hang on a minute. This is not hell. This is Huntington Beach. On oh, a, hey, it's, and it's, it's nice hell. and warm. This is hell. Why is it hell? Because look. Look. This is blown. This town is blown. But we love it. This is our hell. We have to deal with our own problems and our own complaints and our own lifestyle. Do you believe in God? Of course. So God says he's created a place called hell that he's going to send the wicked to. Oh, yeah. So there is a real literal place called hell then? Sure, it's Heil, H-E-I-L. It's right down off the beach boulevard. Whoop, whoop. He judges you by the 10 commandments. Would you be innocent or guilty? Probably guilty. If he did that, which is right, you'd end up in hell? My heart went out to this man. He'd been down on us luck, so I decided to pray for him. You take a big risk when you pray for someone publicly, especially if they have a parrot on their shoulder. Oh! Whoa. Yeah! As far as I'm concerned, when I'm physically dead, I'm dead and that's the end of it, so... What if you're, what if you're wrong? Then so be it. Well, Why should could, I concern myself with that now? Well, do you care about your life? Yeah. Do you love living? Yeah, of course. Yogan know, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? He said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I'm sure every man has at one time or another. Yeah, but have you? Yeah. Have you used God's name in vain? Yeah. Even though you don't believe in him? I think it's more a matter of speech. Yeah. 
So I don't want you to end up in hell. You seem like a nice guy. I'd hate God to give you what you deserve on Judgment Day. You're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. Whatever will happen, will happen. How old are you, Jorgen? 68. How long have you got to live? Probably another 20 years. Are you afraid of dying? No, not at all. If somebody would tell me you're going to die next month, I said, okay, I've lived a full life and have very few regrets, so I'm ready to go. So you wouldn't have any treatment if you found you had cancer? It was June the 3rd. I was in Washington, D.C. with our film crew at an atheist rally to record an episode for season five of our television program. We wanted to show our love for atheists, so we purchased $25,000 worth of Subway gift cards to give to those who were attending the rally. But when the DC police heard that a thousand Christians were coming to help us, they called it a protest and said that if we approached any atheists, we'd be arrested. And so we ended up giving most of the cards to the homeless instead. While we were in DC, I had agreed to do an interview with an atheist filmmaker named Scott Burdick. He wanted to get Banana Man's thoughts on atheism, God, the Bible, and why I'd become a Christian. And so at the age of 20, I thought, why on earth won't people talk about death? We're all in this long line, people are stepping off a cliff, and I thought, can I get out of this line? And so that night I just cried out, why? I didn't even cry out to God. It was just, why? It just makes no sense. Everything is futile if death comes at the end. It makes no sense. And then six months later, I was on a surfing trip. The Gospels explained to me that we've sinned against God, we've violated His law, and like any judge proclaims a sentence, God proclaimed the death sentence upon the whole of humanity. The soul that sins, it shall die. That was, that's why we die. And after this, the judgment and hell awaits because God is just. But it also says God is rich in mercy and He provided a Savior. We broke God's law and Jesus paid the fine in full. And if we'll repent and trust in Him who died for us and rose again on the third day, God says, I'll remit your sins and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Hinduism doesn't offer forgiveness of sins. Buddhism, Islam, no religion, they're all works righteousness. But how do you religions. know that? I can see why this is a very comforting thought. How do you know that it's true? Let me explain it this way. All the religions are what's called works righteousness religions. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, etc. say you have to do something to merit everlasting life. Christianity says you can't. You're a lawbreaker. Anything you offer God is a, an attempt to bribe Him to forgive your sins and grant you everlasting life. The only way we can be forgiven is if the judge is merciful. And God is rich in mercy and he'll forgive any sinner who comes to him. As with other atheists, he kindly gave me a free pass to share the gospel and didn't edit out one word. It was produced by atheists and promoted to atheists. And in three months, it had over 100,000 views. Okay, that fast. sounds like a good spot. <laughs> Are we want to uh, do Lawrence Krauss, we have to go over there. Like, oh, okay, we can go over there now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Banana Man had opened doors once again. Theoretical physicist Professor Lawrence Krauss had also agreed to an interview while we're in DC. Intimate interview. Yeah. It was my plan to put the interview into our then new documentary, The Atheist Delusion. About six months earlier, I'd gone to a local college to film a clip for one of my books called Made in Heaven, a publication filled with beautiful photos of man's so-called inventions that were actually copied from nature without giving God attribution. When I met an atheist named Adam, for some reason I asked him to look through the book for a moment and asked him if he could believe the book made itself. Then I talked about the book of our DNA. I was amazed to see his reaction, so I asked other atheists and they suddenly saw how crazy it was to be an atheist. Having Lawrence Krauss in the film would be a huge drawcard for atheists, even though he had restricted me to just four questions. When we arrived at his hotel and stepped onto the DC sidewalk, I was wondering what he'd be like. I soon found out. He called out my name like some long lost friend. Then he said, I'd like you to meet my friend, Penn Gillette. Penn Gillette? What was he doing there? For some reason, Penn wanted to sit in on the interview. 
Of course, both the professor and Penn wanted their photos taken with me. I knew why, but I didn't mind. They were like excited little kids who were visiting Disneyland and wanted their photos taken with Goofy. Okay. Hey guys, lit it up for you already and everything. All right. Did you know that? Did you? I'm happy with any. Can I get it too? Well, that's right. Freedom from religion bags there. There's some of this. Imagine no religion. Oh, yeah. And Paul, you remember? You know Gus, right? Over there. Well, he can, a, he can sign from God, actually, myself. Okay. So I just ask these four questions. I don't go off the subject. Four right. questions. I used to do that when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass over. I can tell okay. you. Okay. Yeah. This is the biggest And we've agreed and that, it, that we're going to be either all used, unedited, or none, right? No yeah. editing. Are you going to mention banana man in between? No, no, I'm not going to no, no, mention bananas at all. Oh, oh that's right. right. That's right. I might have, yeah. maybe at the beginning. Nelly mentioned Do I need to move it? Are you going to bump it? I don't mind if you do. Okay, maybe I'll add a banana thing here. So. <laughs> in that case. But really, wish someone should have gone. Oh, I thought you had ordered bananas. No. Yeah. You're going to brine or shall I? <laughs> I already have. <laughs> that's good. Can someone be moral? without a belief in God. Absolutely. Um, what's the favorite atheist thing? You can be good without God? Yeah, all you gotta choose, do is choose your own standard of goodness. Um, I interview a lot of people and almost everyone proclaims their own goodness. I'm a good person. What's your definition of good? Well, the dictionary has 40 plus definitions of What's your of good. personal definition? Well, I'll give you the dictionary good. and I'll tell you what my definition of good is from the dictionary. The dictionary has at least 40 different definitions uh -huh. of good. Number one is moral excellence. Okay. That's my definition of good because I side with God's definition of good. Okay. Good means moral perfection in thought, word, and in deed. If you talk to Adolf Hitler, I guarantee you'd think he's a good person. I cleaned up Germany, bought in full employment, got rid of brothels, and cleaned up the scum and purified the German nation. A little girl was looking at a sheep eating green grass, and she thought how nice and white the sheep looked against the green grass. Then it began to snow, and the same girl looked at the same sheep and said, what well, a dirty sheep against the white snow. Mm -hmm. Same sheep, different background. Right. When you and I compare ourselves to the background of man, we come up reasonably clean. I mean, not my life compared to Alf Hitler's makes me seem like a really good person. Right. But on Judgment Day, God will judge us by the standard of moral perfection, absolute righteousness that considers lust to be adultery, hatred to be murder. So it's kind of like a thought crime. Yeah, thought crimes. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you, uh, Lust after a woman, you commit adultery in your heart. So just thinking thinking something like that. Absolutely. If you hate someone, God knows if you had opportunity, you'd probably do it if you knew there was not punishment for your crime. It almost sounds like uh, George Orwell in 1984 where they had thought police and thought crimes. And well, let, let me qualify it. Okay, the average guy lusts after the woman next door. Mm -hmm. God knows and he knows if the woman said, come over, honey, he'd be over like grease lightning because the desire is the same as the deed in Just God's eyes. Just having desire for Oh yeah, the Bible says he who hates his brother is a murderer. Even though they look designed, the illusion of design, let's say like a banana, for example, <laughs> is an illusion. Mm -hmm. And when people assume things like bananas are, are designed, they come up with ridiculous things as you're ultimately familiar with. The same thing with DNA. DNA comes about by biochemistry. The wonderful thing about my worldview versus your worldview is not only is it changeable, but it actually is real. Okay, well, thank you so much. Okay, really thanks. appreciated talking to you. Yeah, same here. Thanks thank a lot. You. Okay. Are we done? No, heckling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah okay. I could only ask him four I questions. Need to get out. And yeah, that, that, that was it. it. That was it. it I would love to go all over the place. Yeah, first you had to ask. Would you like to do an interview? You, 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 you. Ken was standing beside one of the cameras. There were four cameras all rolling. The lights were still set. Everything was perfect for an interview. Surely this was divinely orchestrated. Okay. 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 No, he's finished. He only wanted four questions. Lawrence, did you want to ask any questions yourself? Yeah, yeah. Okay, can I ask you a question? Wait, so, so. I've always been fascinated by the banana interview you, you know you did, which, which I've shown in several of my lectures, and I know that it's, it's very good of you to, to live it down. But um, did you, are you embarrassed by that? Oh, very. Okay. Do you want me to tell you why? Sure. I did it for 30 years as a stand-up routine in front of live audience, always got laughter, but what I did was do it on a television program where there was no reaction, so it fell flat. An atheist got it, 
took it out of context because I had a Coke can, mm -hmm. and then I had a banana, then I'd have an apple, and I'd make a sort of a stand-up routine, and it was very funny in front of live, live audience. But then he said about the genetically altered banana and yeah. just change it all and yeah. repeat it, and it comes yeah, out Because the really banana, so you know, the banana you're using is not, in fact, was a product of intelligent design because original bananas didn't have that shape at all. Yeah. Now, I've okay. noticed Richard Dawkins has used the routine three times on television, mm -hmm. and he's got laughs every time, but he's given me attribution, so I appreciate it. Seriously, Kurt, the whole of creation testifies to the genius of God's creative. You probably think that's some kind of spoof. It's not. Um, this pair, Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron, are deadly serious. No, we're not, Professor. We're not deadly serious about the design of the banana being proof for God's existence. In context, sir, we're making fun of atheism. But you can't see that because you really do think that atheism is intellectual. You don't see that what you believe is truly ridiculous, that it's worthy of ridicule. That atheism is infinitely more ridiculous than believing that a soda can made itself from nothing. What I hope is that you learn from it. Oh yeah, I learned from it. Make sure you do it from a light of light. No, audience. no, 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 no. Yes, Learn the mistakes. And I, no, and I got a second thing. Okay. I've got to tell you what's happened because of it. It's been embarrassing, but it's opened huge doors for me. I've got to talk to atheists on radio programs, television programs. Well, it's true. It, it opened the doors. I wouldn't have known who you were if I hadn't seen yeah. the banana thing. <laughs> so it's and, been great. And, and and yeah, so it's been it's been good that way. Well, I hope it's been very good for you. And and I really wish we did have a banana here for you to sign. But <laughs> but another time. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank Thank you. You. Okay, no, it's okay. I was going to ask why you persist, but it's okay. I, go on. Go on so, you, yeah, no, I'm do thick you, skin like a banana. No, no, you wouldn't have done this if you weren't. Um, uh, are you trying? Are you trying to save people? I is can't that, save a soul. Okay, so what? what why? What? What? Is it? You just feel your call to do it? I, I believe in the existence of hell. I believe it's a very real place, and with every ounce of sincerity and earnestness I've got, I want to warn people that God is just and holy and loving. Oh, yes. That's why he condemns people to eternity for torture. No. Because he loves them. So no, much. he'll have so. his day of justice where Nazis will be punished for their wickedness, but he's so thorough he'll punish lying and stealing and adultery and fornication. Forever? Yeah. It'll be no That's a time. loving God. No That's amazing. Saddam Hussein in the sky. It's really kind of amazing. Let me just give you one, let me just give you one sentence. Mm -hmm. 54 million people will die in the next 12 months. 54 mm -hmm. million worldwide. Mm -hmm. I found everlasting life. I'm totally convinced of that. And I just want to share it with other people. And all I want them to do is listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, again, to, I should say the other thing is everlasting life to me just seems like the worst torture. It may be to you, but not to me. Because yeah, yeah. you have coming. to be with, you know, can you imagine an eternity where you'd have to talk to me? I would love that. Yeah. I'd be yeah. honored. <laughs> Thank you again. Yeah, yeah. we'll be different yeah. places. We'll be having all the fun. Thank okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Come to come see. Come oh, see. Thank you. Goodbye. I didn't get to say goodbye to you. I wanted, yeah. Thanks now you know me. goodbye is from God be with you. God be with you. Yeah, goodbye. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> God be with you. Just it's in the dictionary. Yeah, it's the awesome thing. Hold on. We'll leave that each other. Hold on, no, no. We got Google here. We got Google. <laughs> we got Google. We can settle it. A lot of science is determined by Google. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can't believe everything you read in Google, and if you're right, I won't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, exactly. Just take a there minute and say safe travel. No matter what the evidence is. Goodbye. Now that's type one faith. Goodbye that's etymology. Faith, so. Yeah. You should just go straight to Snopes, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but you... That's a, good, that's a good point. Goodbye, Goodbye etymology. etymology. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Late 16th century con contraction of God be with you. Well, you win this one. We, you know, and the point is, I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> That's okay. great. Okay. Nice yeah. to meet you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 About five minutes after my interview with Lawrence Krauss, I was standing with our production crew on the sidewalk outside the hotel. We're about to leave when I was approached by Penn and his actor friend, Paul Provenza. As the conversation began, Scotty began filming. I shared the complete gospel with Penn, taking him through the Ten Commandments into the cross. We spoke about the difference between faith and trust, the question of who made God, and many other issues. I want to thank you for that little video you made about Christian, a guy that gave you a Gideon Bible. Yeah. 
That was the most perceptive thing I think I've ever heard from any atheist or even non-Christian. Oh. Yeah, it tears, it was so wonderful. Pence, I'm tackling you tonight because I love you. Because you said if this comes a point, you tackle the point. If I believe that a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it, there's a certain point where I tackle you. When you tackle the point. And that's what I'm telling yes. you because I care. Yes. Minutes after I talked to him about tackling someone who was about to be hit by an approaching vehicle and didn't know it, Penn and Paul, in an effort to end another conversation that had started, stepped onto the road and were almost killed. This is what Penn said on his podcast soon after the incident. We're so eager to get away that I really did, and I mean, without a doubt, no joke, no exaggeration, I pull Provenza into traffic where a car slams on its brakes, squeals, and misses him, going fast by maybe three inches. I mean, hits his pant leg. That's how close it is to breaking his leg. I'm so eager to get away from there that I really did run into traffic and pull Provenza with me. Tim Behrens hosts a radio program in Las Vegas. When he interviewed me on his program about my Banana Man book, he said that he had read something in it that needed to be corrected. Uh, there's one error in your book, and it's not your fault, it's Penn Jillette's fault. Uh, let me tell you what happened real briefly. Uh, once I, I got him a, a copy of your Evidence Bible. I was thinking as I was reading Banana Man, and you were writing about Penn Jillette, I thought, why didn't he say anything about the Evidence Bible so that was you that gave him that Bible? I gave him the Bible, and I gave him an evidence Bible that you put out. Wow, that is amazing. And it was actually a Living Waters Evidence Bible that I gave him. An evidence Bible? And Our evidence Bible? Your evidence Bible. I had his name engraved on it. I had given one to his partner, Teller, as well. So you're the man? I'm the man. So <laughs> tell me exactly what happened. You went and you just handed him a Bible? You went to a show? Well, I had, uh, I had given blood and was given free tickets for the show. And I thought this would be good to, uh, to get this in his hands. And uh, so afterwards, they meet the, uh, the people that have come to the show out in the, uh, the lobby. And uh, I usually wait till last uh, because of what I'm gonna be doing and uh, giving. And so I, I went up to him and I said, Penn, uh, I've got a Bible for you. And I didn't know how, because I knew he was an atheist. I didn't know how he was gonna react. And he was very gracious. He said, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, so I just, I just walked away. And uh, I just it, you know, felt very good. I thought, wow. And then a, a week later, I went back in. Uh, you can meet these fellas out in the lobby. I didn't go to the show that night. But uh, uh, again, I waited till, till last. And I said, Penn, did you read any of that Bible I got you? And he said, I've read the Bible four times. Have you read the Bible? Well, I've, I've had a form of dyslexia. I've not been, read many books in my life. In fact, I think six books, Banana Man was seventh. And uh, I've really struggled with reading. And I, I said, no, I've had a reading disability. I, I haven't read it all the way through. I mean, I listened to it a lot, but, and he just, just shook his head and walked away. And I went out to my car, I was so depressed. And I saw that my sister had called from Michigan and I told her what happened, and she said, Tim, you need to go to YouTube and type in Penn Jillette and the gift of a Bible. And when I did, I thought, wow, thank you, Lord, thank you. And I went back in the following week, and I said, Penn, what you said on YouTube ought to be preached from every pulpit in the land. This afternoon, uh, I contacted Penn and he confirmed that it was Tim who gave him the Bible. Very few regrets, so I'm ready to go. So you wouldn't have any treatment if you found you had cancer? I contribute to having a healthy life by being active, by being physically yeah, fit. Who are, you, who are you grateful to for life? God gave you life. Maybe so. So listen. But you can prove your point any more than I can. Yes, I can. No. Hang on, you can't say I can't, because I can. Let's prove it. All you have to do 
is do what the Bible says, repent and trust in Him who died on the cross for you. If you'll do that, if you'll repent and trust in the Savior, say, God, forgive my sins, and willfully put your trust in Jesus Christ, God will reveal Himself to you. This is what Jesus said, He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love Him and will reveal myself to Him. So there's the gauntlet. If you obey the gospel, God will reveal Himself to you. I feel compelled to do any of the things you just said. Oh, well, let me leave the ball in your court. Maybe tonight you'll have a little, kind of minor heart attack on your bed, and you'll think about the issues of life and death, and you'll say, I better get right with God before death seizes upon me, because this is so important. Remember, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? when you're going to die. You don't, and there's something in you that says, oh, I don't want to die. So this is where Jürgen sat, day after day, month after month, year after year, and suddenly he was gone. Penn and his friend were almost hit by a vehicle. Jürgen wasn't so fortunate. It's human nature to believe that death is something that happens to other people. He didn't get his 20 years. And for that reason, I want to tackle you today. Please, if you're not right with God, get right with God today. You may not have tomorrow. I can't express to you how humiliated I was by the Banana Man label. I could hardly pick up a banana, let alone eat one for years. I took the word banana and put it among the cuss words on my Facebook page, so if anyone made a comment with the word banana, it didn't make it through into the comments. And that film crew from New Zealand, they wanted to talk about Banana Man, and I wouldn't let them because I was so embarrassed. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me as I continue my examination of the books of Ray Comfort. But look at what happened. God delights in taking that which is a seeming failure and making it a success. Who but God could take atheists of all people and not only have them listen to the gospel, but have them proclaim it. So if you're going through a tough time today, if you're being mocked for your faith, lift up hands that hang down, rejoice and be exceedingly glad because the day is coming when those who are fools for Christ will be seen to be wise. And those who are wise in their own eyes will be seen to be fools because they rejected God's gift of everlasting life. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch The Fool. We hope that the movie has inspired you to share the message of eternal life. We want to encourage you to watch our award-winning movies, such as The Atheist Delusion, Evolution vs. God, and 180, freely at livingwaters.com. On our website, you'll find fresh daily articles, videos, and audio messages, as well as books, DVDs, unique gospel tracts, and other resources to help you share your faith biblically and effectively. Make sure to visit livingwaters.com today. Made in Heaven, a publication filled with beautiful photos of man's so-called inventions. I was thinking as I was reading Banana Man and you were writing about Pendulite, I thought, why didn't he say anything about the Evidence Bible? So that was you that gave him that Bible? I gave him the Bible and I gave him an Evidence Bible that you put out. Mm -hmm.